Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us at our webinar today on Living Harmoniously with Singapore Specials. My name is Dr. Lin Anhui, and I am a veterinarian with the Animal and Veterinary Service, a cluster of the National Parks Board. Today, I'll be sharing with you on what are Singapore Specials, our Trap Neuter Release Manage Program, or TNRM for short, as well as Project Adore, which is Project on Adoption and Rehoming of Dogs. We also have two very special guests, Mr. James Benjamin Norman and his dog Margie, whom he adopted through Project Adore, who will be joining us later on the program. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll address them later. So, let's get started. Community animals, such as dogs and cats, play a vital role in our community and our city in nature. Our well-being and health are closely inter interconnected with the health and well-being of animals in our community. So NPARCS, together with AVS, brings, uh, works closely with our partners to enhance uh, the competencies in animal health, welfare and management. So what are Singapore Specials and where did they come from? Now, Singapore Specials is not the name of a new cocktail. They're actually an affectionate name that we have for our local mixed breed dogs in Singapore. They are thought to have originated from abandoned dogs, and these could be pet dogs or guard dogs from early days that were abandoned and started intermingling and interbreeding in the wild. So Singapore Specials are often perceived as dangerous, wild or aggressive. And this is quite understandable because they do not have a lot of interactions with humans and they're not familiar. However, some of our community dogs in Singapore are familiar with their caregivers and used to their presence and can be really sweet. So for example, there are some specials that stay at the same time, same place every day for their caregiver to come with their meal. And after feeding, they would accompany the caregiver on her feeding rounds. So we manage our local stray dogs using TNRM, which is an internationally recognised approach for managing the stray dog population. Our nationwide TNRM programme is a five-year programme that was launched on the 10th of November 2018. The aim is to sterilise 70% of the local stray dog population. And this is a humane science-based approach to sustainable management of our stray dog population. The TNRM program is a collaboration between AVS, Animal Welfare Groups, or AWGs for short, veterinary uh, community, as well as the public. And AVS is partnering the community, the Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, or SPCA for short, as the lead AWG in coordinating efforts for these programs. So what exactly does the TNRM program involve? T stands for trap, and this is where free-roaming dogs are trapped from the environment in a humane way. They are humanely captured and brought back. N stands for neuter, which is the surgical sterilization or removal of the reproductive organs of the dogs so that they can no longer breed in the environment. So this is really to control the stray dog population. At the same time, the dogs are also vaccinated with core vaccinations to protect them from infectious diseases that we have in Singapore. If the dogs are released, they are also vaccinated against rabies. Now, Singapore is, is free from rabies uh, since 1953, so uh, don't, don't worry about that. Uh, we really vaccinate dogs against rabies when they are released so that if we have a rabies incursion in Singapore, there will be uh, vaccinated dogs which um, which would hinder the spread of the disease. Now, R stands for rehome or release, and in some cases, the dogs may also be fostered or sheltered with AWGs or relocated. Uh, at the same time, we also do vaccinate, uh, we do microchip the dogs for traceability and also ear tip them so that there is visual identification of their sterilization status and we do not unknowingly trap the same dog again. Lastly, M stands for manage. Now manage, this is where AVS works with AWGs to manage concerns of the public and residents, as well as carry out public education and outreach activities. In terms of funding for the TNRM program, NPARC supports AWGs costs for trapping, sterilization, vaccination and microchipping, as well as pre and post surgical boarding of the dogs.
The trapping of stray dogs is not a straightforward process. It often involves surveillance of the area to better understand the behaviour of the pack, as well as working closely with AWGs and caregivers on the ground to condition the dogs to feed within coral traps. So on the left here, you can see a coral trap, which is kind of like a large playpen, and we feed the dogs in the trap so that they get used to going into the trap so that we can safely and humanely capture them. On the um, right side, you can see a TNRM notice, and this is a sign that we use for trapping operations. It really helps to advise members of the public to stay away from the trap for their own safety, and also to advise them on the TNRM program, which is in progress. At the bottom of the slide, you can see a dark green TNRM armband. So this is worn by our authorized TNRM trappers who have undergone training on the safe and humane capture of dogs under the TNRM program. After trapping, the dogs are brought to SPCA's clinic or partnering vet clinics for sterilization. AVS also sterilizes and rehomes stray dogs that we receive under the TNRM program. On the right here, you can see a dog that has just been sterilized by one of our AVS vets, Denise, and is being monitored during its recovery. On the left, you can see um, a stray dog with its left ear tipped. So as I said, this tipping is really to identify the dogs visually. Of course, they have a microchip, um, but it provides visual identification of a dog that has already been sterilized. Now the dog is tipped, ear tipped under anesthesia, so it's a painless procedure for the dog. From the time the dog is trapped and during its stay at the shelter and the clinic, the dog is cared for and closely monitored. An assessment of the dog's health and behavior is also made to determine its suitability, suitability, suitability for a rehoming. And under the TNRM program, our priority is to rehome as many of the dogs as possible. Um, and in a loving home, the dog can be well cared for, it's got its vet needs tended to, and it's provided with food, shelter, enrichment, and lots of love. So the remaining sterilized dogs, which cannot be rehomed, will then be released to live out their lives naturally. So I would like to touch on another important aspect of R, which is rehabilitation. And rehabilitation really helps more dogs find loving homes. So while stray dogs, some stray dogs may be familiar with humans through their interactions with the caregivers, not all of them have this opportunity and they would not typically come into contact with people and might be fearful or timid. So for stray dogs which are not immediately rehomable, AVS commenced a pilot a canine rehabilitation program where we, where we have trained staff to work with the dogs uh, to rehabilitate them with the aim of eventually finding them a loving home. So the key strategies of rehabilitation are threefold. We have socialization, obedience training and behavioral modification. So with socialization, we are really looking at socializing, introducing the animal to something new and unfamiliar, an unfamiliar experience through a safe and controlled manner, such as new people, environments, or new things. So this is crucial during the animal's sensitive development periods, and it's also shown to reduce problem behaviors in adulthood and um, improve companion animal welfare. So on the left, you can see socialization of a puppy, getting it used to human touch, human interaction, um, so that it will be more familiar with this in the future. We can also so socialize puppies to other puppies or other dogs, so that they'll be more familiar with how to interact with other dogs should they meet one. Now, second is obedience training. Obedience training is something that most of you pet owners might be familiar with and that's when we teach our, our pets to, for example, sit, heal, come and these are basic obedience commands which will help the pet adapt better to, to life um, in a home. And this helps caretakers to handle the pets better as well as uh, reduce the risk of animals developing problem behaviours later in life. So thirdly, we have uh, behaviour modification, which is more complex. So it involves identification of the behaviour problem um, and developing an intervention plan, such as um, um, modifying the behaviour to change the behaviour with the appropriate tools and strategies and support. And sometimes a vet um, assistance might be required, for example, using behaviour modification drugs to ease the animal into the, the suitable 
behaviour. Uh, some common behavioural issues that we see include aggression, over arousal, as well as fear. And the photo in the middle, we can see, illustrates muzzle training. So this is when we put some uh, treats into the muzzle to entice and train the dog to, to move involuntarily. And it also associates the muzzle with a positive association, like a, with a treat, and, um, and is more willing to do so in the future, even when the treat is not there. Here are some examples of enrichment that we use uh, during our, our socialization and, and, and training of the dogs at the AVS shelter. So we have foraging toys, chew toys, lots of playtime and training in our dog runs, uh, walks and socialization, as well as uh, all the dog bits that the dogs get in their kennels. Okay, manage is a key aspect of the TNRM program and it's the M part of TNRM and it really looks at how to spread awareness, educate and manage the public so that we can coexist with our community animals in harmony. We carry out regular public education, outreach and engagement through community events, roadshows, talks and walkabouts in the estate. We also receive feedback from the public on stray dogs and take the opportunity to engage them on how to manage stray dogs' encounters and what we do under TNRM. Of course, we have the Pets Day Out and the most recent one was held on 4th December. It was a hybrid PDO because of the current COVID situation. So we had part online and part physical. And uh, we hope you, you, you managed to tune in. But if you didn't, if you missed it, you can always catch the videos on Animal Buzz, uh, our Facebook page. An important aspect of living in coexistence with our stray dogs is to understand their behaviour. So dogs are territorial animals and it's only natural that they bark in response to humans or animals that may enter their territory and startle them. Stray dogs can often be seen roaming in packs as they forage for food or shelter and some of, uh, most of the dogs are afraid of humans and are quick to avoid you but some of them might be more interested or friendly and try to approach you. So dogs utilise their body language to communicate. Um, you might be able to tell if a dog is anxious or fearful from the position of their ears, their tail and other non-verbal cues. So direct eye contact is considered offensive um, and aggressive to dogs. So if you do meet a stray dog, try to avoid direct eye contact with them. Here are some tips on what you can do if you encounter a stray dog. Firstly, uh, keep your distance. If you are aware of unfamiliar dogs in the area, try to use another route. Uh, especially if you are walking your own pet dog, it's advisable to stay away from the area because you might never know how the two dogs respond to each other. Also for cyclists, you can, if you are aware of stray dogs in the area, you can use another route or you can also dismount and push your bikes because dogs are no, do, stray dogs are known to chase fast moving objects and um, yep, this is really for your own safety as well as, as the dogs. Secondly, you can stay calm and move slowly away, uh, avoid approaching the dogs because um, they might feel threatened and also, as I said before, avoid direct eye contact um, do not shout or provoke the dogs. Do not try to chase them or hit them uh, or make loud sounds. So the TNRM program is making good progress. Uh, we are just going into the fourth year of our program and more than 2,700 dogs have been trapped and more than half of these have been rehomed or fostered. AVS has also commenced a research study on our stray dog population. We are looking at abundance, spatial ecology, as well as the behaviour of stray dogs. So our findings can help them to better manage, help us to better manage uh, the local stray dog population. So how can you help? You can help to spread awareness of our TNRM programme, share tips on managing stray dog encounters. If you are thinking of getting a dog, pet dog, consider adopting. Also microchip and license your dogs if you already have one. Here are our TNRM partners. We have um, several animal welfare groups whom we work closely with. And uh, we have the Animal Lovers League, Action for Singapore Dogs, Causes for Animal Singapore, Exclusively Mongrels, Mercy Light Animal Rescue and Sanctuary, Noah's Ark Cares, 
OSCARS, or, which also stands for OASIS, Second Chance Animal Shelter. We have Purely Adoptions, SOSD, Singapore. Uh, Singapore Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, or SPCA for short, as well as Voices for Animals. And of course, we work closely with the Singapore Vet Association as well. So, moving on to Project Adore. So, Project Adore is a project on adoption and rehoming of dogs. And this is really an initi initiative to allow more local mixed breed dogs to uh, stay in, Singa in, in HDB flats in Singapore. So the Project the Door was piloted in 2012 um, and it's led by AVS, supported by HDB and our Project Adore AWG partners. Every year, about 250 dogs are rehomed under Project the Door and uh, we are very excited to have uh, the people you see in the photo. So we have uh, Benjamin as well as Margie and Flora shown in the photo as well with us here today and you'll meet them later on in the program. So in 2017, Project Adore was expanded to allow retired sniffer dogs to be adopted by canine officers such as those from SAF, SCDF and SPF. And this project was open to the public the following year. The four sniffer dogs available for adoption under this program are the Labrador, English Springer, English Springer Cocker Spaniel and Pointer. Under the canine scheme, 48 retired Sinfa dogs have been rehomed. 16 of them were rehomed to members of the public. So originally, dogs were required to be within 50 cm in height and a 15 kg weight limit to be rehomed under Project Adore. But in 2020, we piloted an expansion of the project to allow dogs up to 55 cm in height with no weight criteria. This allowed about 20% more dogs to be adopted to HDB flats every year. And as of May 2021, an additional 131 dogs have been adopted under the expanded uh, Project Adore. So Project Adore AWG partners screen the adopters and assess the dog's temperament to determine suitability for rehoming. All adopters must comply with the Code of Responsible Behaviour, or CORB for short. And under the CORB, adopters must complete a mandatory obedience training of six sessions with their dogs. And this helps to reduce disamenities and potential nuisance to neighbours. Projectador AWG partners provide post-adoption support through adoption counsellors should any issues arise post-adoption. So here are some important considerations when adopting a special. So firstly, you have to be prepared uh, lots of time and patience for you to bond with the dog and build trust with the dog. Because as I said, Singapore specials, they might be timid and fearful in nature. Um, unlike, unlike pedigree breeds, uh, their genetics are a little bit different and their temperament is as well. So uh, they tend to be more fearful than average and less socialised to people and this requires a lot more time and patience with them. Next, Singapore specials would require pl plenty of socialisation to help them adapt to their new environment, things and people. Specials might not be accustomed to living in flats or um, you know, staircases, lifts, even entering cars to go to the vet or go to the park. These are all very new to them and can be very frightening. Fourth, uh, we want to use positive reinforcement-based training methods. So these dogs usually have a t timid temperament and using negative-based methods could cause a negative relationship between the dog and the adopter and also result in defensive aggression. And lastly, we want to have predictable interactions and routine. So having a structured uh, routine to your day, uh, same same timing of the walks, same meal times, this would help them predict the, um, you know, the day better and help them better adjust and adapt. So here are our six Project Adore partners. We have uh, the Action for uh, Singapore Dogs, Causes for Animals, exclusively mongrels, uh, Mercy Light Animal Rescue and Sanctuary, SOSD, as well as SPCA. So you can feel free to approach any of these Adore partners if you would like to adopt a dog uh, under Project Adore. So here we have some resources on, on our AVS microsite as well. We have some information on dog bo body language, stray dog encounters, 
We have information on TNRM as well as projector door as well. So if you'd like to volunteer with NParks, do check out our link here. You may also sign up for our newsletter or follow us on our various social media channels where we share interesting snippets and exciting events. So I've come to the end of my talk and I hope you found it useful. Um, we also brings us nicely to the next segment where we partnered SPCA to produce a short video on TNRM. Let's watch it now. Hi everyone, my name is Evan and I'm Pamela and we are from the Animal and Veterinary Service, a cluster of the National Parks Board. Today we have Ms. Selena from the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals or more commonly known as SPCA. Hi everyone, my name is Selena and over here we have Big Boy. He is a Singapore special and he is part of the TNRM program, the Trap Neuter Release Manage program. The TNRM program for stray dogs was launched in November 2018 with AVS 11 participating animal welfare groups and the Singapore Veterinary Association. We are going to bring you through what is TNRM. The TNRM program, grounded in science, involves humanely catching community dogs and sterilizing them to manage the dog population. TNRM is conducted nationwide and SPCA, as the lead animal welfare group, partners us in coordinating efforts for the program. As part of the program, we set up corral traps and work closely with feeders to trap the dogs and bring them to veterinary clinics for sterilisation. This is the SPC clinic where we sterilise the community dogs. Our target is to sterilise 70% of community dogs in Singapore over a five-year period. Come, let's see the work of the SPCA clinic. After the dogs have been caught, they are brought to our partnering vet clinics or the SPC clinics where they will be sterilised, microchipped and vaccinated. Those that cannot be rehomed may be released at suitable locations to live out their lives naturally. Let us visit the home of one of the Singapore specials adopted by Dinesh. Hi, my name is Dinesh. This is my uncle Manoj and this is our eight-month-old Singapore special, Kaya. We adopted Kaya at the start of this year. Uh, and we've been having a great time with her since. She's full of energy and loves to play. When our last dog, Rampage, uh, passed away last year, uh, we were looking for, for a new puppy. So, um, after looking around, doing a bit of research, I think we decided that adopt, adopting was something that we wanted to do. So, uh, when Kai was found and rescued at the back of a condo in Yishun, her foster mom uh, got in touch with us. So, we came down and uh, visited her. And I think we decided that, yeah, she's, she's the one. So, it took us maybe about a day or so to come to the decision. And then, yeah, we brought her home. When we first got her, uh, she was uh, very skittish, uh, very scared, always hiding in corners. Um, it took a while for her to come out of her shell. All right? um, but now you can see she rules the house. Uh. She goes everywhere, she's not scared of anything. This is her territory, these are his people. So she's fine now, you know. Very different from how she was when, she, when, when we first got her. Uh, she's very affectionate to everyone in the family. She um, can be a bit anxious when she's left alone, but otherwise um, she gets on with everyone in the house. And she's particularly sensitive to the, my elderly mother-in-law. She doesn't jump on her or anything like that. So she's got a certain um, uh, smartness about her, which um, uh, we are beginning to appreciate every day. La. M in TNRM stands for manage and refers to the management of the stray dog community and the concerns of the public, if any. AVS carries out public education and engagement through community events supported by animal welfare groups, 
such as our Pets Day Out, where animals can be adopted. We are happy to share that since the launch of the TNRM program, more than 2,400 dogs were sterilised and more than half rehomed or fostered. Dog owners, you can do your part by microchipping and licensing your pet dogs for traceability. And should you encounter our community dogs, stay calm. Do not run or shout. We can do our part by coexisting harmoniously with our community dogs in our city in nature. Now let's go on to the next part of our program where we have two very special guests, Benjamin and Margie, whom he adopted through Project Adore. Let's go meet them now. Hello everyone, and here we have Mr. James Benjamin Norman, as well as his beautiful brown-eyed girl, Margie. Welcome Hi, to Jurong Lake Gardens. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here, and very good morning. So tell us a little bit about your experience through Project Adore. How did you meet Margie, and how did you come to adopt her? Okay, so I um, actually follow the Animal Welfare Group, uh, Causes for Animals, and we saw a photo of uh, Margie, and uh, so we decided, I mean, I decided that uh, maybe we should have a look. Yes. Uh, go and meet her and I think they had an event outside the Singapore Zoo uh, so I mean when I saw the, the photograph of her I knew that I would like to adopt her so I, I brought the form and everything uh, and then we, we sort of uh, applied for it and then I think the, the very next day uh, the people from CAS, Christine and Marcus, they brought her to our place for a trial stay and um, during the trial stay uh, before that we, they also assessed our home uh, let yep. us know if there were any changes that had to be made to certain areas of the home sure. uh, for, the, for, for, for Margie's safety. Sure. Yep. So, so um, Benjamin mentioned Christine and Marcus and they are from our Animal Welfare Group partner Causes for Animals that is also a Project Adore partner. So feel free to approach Causes for Animals as well as any of our other Project Adore partners if you would like to adopt one. So you mentioned that um, Christine and Marcus mentioned you had to make some lifestyle adjust adjustments uh, before Margie comes in. Could you um, share a little bit more about this? Um, yeah, I mean, for lifestyle, I think um, because uh, both my wife and I, we work, yes. uh, so we, and she needs her walks as well. So we had to make sure that uh, on a daily basis, uh, we bring her for, for three walks. Yeah. Um, and at the beginning, when we, we, we had Margie, um, they informed us that she had some heartworms. Right. Uh, so we needed to manage her walks uh, carefully. Yes. So I think for the first uh, two or three months, um, each of her walks had to be, I think, the most five minutes. And she, she, should, she shouldn't uh, strain herself as well. Yes. Uh, so that's something we had to be very careful about the first uh, few months. Sure. Yeah, yeah that, that's really important to always find out more on the history of your, the medical and behavioural history of, of, of the dog that you're looking to adopt. And uh, the AWG or the caregiver can share a lot more um, about that. Hey Margie, do you want to come meet everyone? Come on, come on. Come Margie here. There you okay. go. There you go. You're the star today. Yeah. Come here. Come on. Okay, sit down. Sit Margie. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Can you share a little bit with us about her temperament, um, her behaviour? Sure. Uh, so Margie is five uh, this year. Yes. Uh, we've had her for about two years. Um, so I think uh, initially she was very um, cautious when yes. she was with us at home, yeah, but now uh, I think I see her, I mean you can see her character now, <laughs> yeah, uh, so she likes her treats very much. Yeah, Margie, Margie. come here, come here, come on, come here, come here, come here Margie, come here, yeah. look, good girl. Yeah, so she's very treat motivated um, yeah. and she's quite protective of us as well. Sure. Uh, so for example, if we, we bring her down for walks and if she's on the left, and if someone comes very close on the right, she might try to, ah, you know. Yeah, I think she just wants you. to ensure that uh, I'm fine. You're safe, yeah. Safe, yeah. Margie, come here. Yeah, uh, some dogs there, can be yeah. very protective over their owners, come and it's good to know how you, you handle your dog. I notice you've got a special leash here. Do you want to tell us uh, a little bit about oh your yeah, leash? So, so, one of the things that, uh, because there's this obedience training, yes. Uh, so, uh, I think Marcus. Uh, 
taught us how to, to hold the leash. So one of the most important things uh, he taught us, I think, was to always ensure you have a two-hand grip. Yes. Uh, so... Oh, hello. A signal for treats. <laughs> yeah. So, for darling. example, if, um, if um, there's, there's some, someone near something, something near that she's not happy about, I always have my, my second arm here. Yes. Uh, so it's very close to the collar so that uh, she doesn't go too far. Yeah, so you have good control over her uh, as you're any walking. Possible, um, sure. Issues. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah. that's really responsible as a pet owner and that's something we want to reach out to all the other pet owners as well. Whether you have a special or just a, another dog, oh, yeah. it's always important to be able to control your dog when walking them outdoors because Situations can be quite unpredictable with other dogs, other people, cyclists, and so on. So it's always good to be able Margie. to control your dog well. All Margie, right, Margie. Come, come here. Come, come on, Margie. Drong Lake Gardens is more interesting than, than us right now. So um, maybe you can share a little bit of uh, some memorable experiences or a memorable moment you have uh, with Margie. Sure, I think um, I can think of maybe two that comes come to mind. Yes. Uh, first was, I think last year I had um, chicken pox for about two weeks. Oh dear. Uh, so I couldn't do her walks here, yeah, sure. but uh, and I was lying down on the couch most of the time and she seemed to be able to sense it, you know, yes. so she would just come and lie down very oh. close to me for the, for, the, for the whole period actually. Magic. Yeah. So That's that was very sweet. one. Yeah, I think uh, another might have been when it was a very, very uh, stormy night and right. uh, the wind was very, very strong. So the windows were shutting. So I woke, it was the middle of the night. So initially she does not, uh, she didn't sleep with us she didn't outside the room. Right. Uh, so I went out to close the other windows and um, I saw her hiding under the, if she was in the toilet, in the common toilet, hiding under the basin. Uh, she's very afraid of the toilet itself because she associates it with uh, showers, ah. which she doesn't like very much. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think I knew then that she's very afraid of what's happening. So we brought her into our room and we put her on the floor just next to the bed. Yes. And uh, ever since that night, she's been with us uh, in the oh. room. Yeah. That's right. She feel much more comfortable and safer with you in your room. Uh, I, I would think so, yes. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. that she was uh, yeah, afraid of the toilet as opposed to afraid of the thunderstorm, yeah. or she was as well. Right. Some, some dogs, you can get uh, thunder jackets to make them feel safe and secure uh, during thunderstorms especially. And you can uh, give them lots of cuddles and security and, and treats to um, help to get them form a positive association with the experience. Oh, Margie. Do you have any tips for um, people who might be thinking on, of adopting specials um, or going through the project adore process? Well, I think um, we, we have to be very sure of our decision. Yes. And because it's a lot of commitment, like I mentioned, oh, the sure. three walks earlier. Mm. And then there's also, um, you need to understand that uh, if the dog is, let's say, very, very calm at first, like she was, yes. uh, it might not be like that for the entire duration. So you have to be prepared for maybe like extra training Sure. Or you really need to really, I think, invest your time and your, your care. Yes. Um, there's also some visits to the vets, uh, which can cost quite a bit. Sure. Yeah. So that's another another one. Um, what else? I think um, I think most important, yes, is, is the commitment. That's right. Yeah. Yes. It, it's, it's a big decision, and it's a decision for the whole family as well, not just yourself, but also for the dog, for the rest of your family members. So make sure everyone's on board with your decision. I think Ben brought up a few good points as well. The commitment, care, uh, time and patience required. Never underestimate that. Um, and the dogs have, have, yeah, have so much vested in you as well. Uh, with vet visits, it's recommended to go to see a vet annually so that you can get a good checkup and pick up anything uh, before it gets too advanced. And also, uh, she would need her annual vaccinations, core vaccinations, dental checkups, uh, parasite treatment, and so on, just to keep her in tip top shape. Yeah. So um, maybe one last question would be um, Do you have anything you want to share with other pet owners, owners who might not own a special? Uh, any advice? Any things you wish you could tell them but never really could during that, um, that walk? Well, I think, um, well, I mean, yes, they are Singapore specials and they are like any other dogs. Uh, so they love to play as well. Uh, but because of their size, I think sometimes uh, people who are you know, not, not very familiar with them, they may get afraid uh, when, they, when they try to play with other dogs. Yeah, yes. so uh, for example, for, for Maji, when um, sometimes she meets smaller dogs and uh, both of them want to play and she tries to do the same. Yes. Sometimes the owner gets scared and pulls the dog away or carries the dog sure, away. And sure. this sort of angers her, I guess. She starts barking. Right, There's right. this whole uh, new drama that starts. Oh, sure, I yeah. see. Maji, come here. 
So it's very much about how we react to, to the specials as well, not just them reacting to us, but um, yeah, yeah, knowing how they behave, how Magical. understanding uh, their thought process, understanding what they are encountering as well, um, would, would help us a lot live, live harmoniously with them. So yeah, thank you so much for being on our show today. And Magic. you've been such a sweet darling, aren't you? She's, she's so well behaved. She's, yeah, you're a superstar. Thank you so much for thank sharing. You for, thank I you think for having us. it's been really good um, meeting, meeting Margie and having Ben sharing all his experience and, and advice on the show. So, yeah. Um, the next segment will be our question and answer. So, um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and we'll address them shortly. And now we're at the Q&A segment of the show. So let's see what questions have come in. Um, okay, so we've got one, the first question from Olivia Lim. So how are Singapore specials different from other dog breeds in terms of personality? Thanks very much. I think it's a great question, Olivia. Um, so Singapore specials, they differ in their genetics um, and temperament. So they might be more fearful, more timid um, because they were born in the wild, most of them, and they grew up um, not having much interaction with people or even other animals, other pet breeds. So they might be um, less socialized and less, um, less, less confident. Uh, they, might, they, might approach, they might be less likely to approach you um, so when we meet Singapore Specials, we want to have extra time and patience, um, understand the behaviour. Um, we want to use positive uh, reinforcement methods. So we want to encourage them to approach us um, and always let them take their time and adapt. Right, let's see. Next question. All right, uh, we have a next question from Charlotte. When do TNRM dogs get released instead of rehomed? So under, thanks very much Charlotte for your question. Under the Trap Neuter Release Managed Program, we try to rehome um, animals, the dogs, uh, as much as possible. Um, we also rehabilitate the dogs, as I mentioned before, um, to get them more used and adapted to living in a home environment. However, we recognize that not all dogs may be suitable for living in a home. So sometimes their temperament, they can be quite timid or fearful. Uh, if they were to live uh, in a closed environment or a shelter environment, it might be quite stressful to them and they might um, yeah, experience physical as well as emotional stress. And it's not good for their mental well-being either. So we recognize that these dogs might do better in the environment and we make the decision to release them uh, so that they can live out their lives naturally. Whereas uh, dogs that do get rehomed, of course, we recognize that there are benefits to this. They get uh, their food, shelter, they get vet care, and they, their welfare um, is taken care of. So it's much better for them to be in a home, of course, but this is not always the case, and we, we recognize that. Okay. Next question. Right, we've got a question from Wayne. I have friends who are concerned about adopting Singapore specials that are mostly quite senior. So how do I convince them that it will be fine and where can they find support? That's a really good question. I think it applies not just to Singapore specials, but also all dogs that are senior and that you're consi considering adopting. So some of the considerations uh, you might have are firstly, of course, just like 
just like people, dogs age as well. And as they age, you know, their systems, their body systems, their organs um, are a bit weaker. They might not function at um, tip-top shape. So uh, one of the things we want to consider is their health condition. So we always want to get a good uh, medical history of um, the dog. We want to know, do they have any underlying uh, diseases, any chronic diseases? Sometimes they might have kidney or liver or heart issues. So we want to know about these so that we can better manage them. So always speak to the caregiver or the uh, animal welfare group that you're adopting from, uh, its previous owner, to understand a little bit more about this. Um, we also want to think about their diet and nutrition. So senior dogs, uh, they have lower metabolism. They don't need as many calories as, say, a young puppy. And we want to calibrate their diet accordingly. So you might want to choose a formulation that is um, more suitable, a senior's diet that is lower in calories, uh, more easily digestible, so that um, it's better for, for your dog. Some other things you might want to think about are um, as dogs age, they might lose, uh, have gradual loss of their vision or hearing. So you might want to adapt uh, your, your home environment accordingly. So if you have a dog that's losing its, its vision or going blind, you might want to rearrange, no, you might not want to rearrange the furniture. So you might want to keep everything in place so that the dog is familiar with its environment. Uh, it knows its way around the house. The pathway doesn't change. Um, try not to rearrange the furniture or, or add furniture. Um, another thing you could think of is perhaps if the dog has, is developing arthritis or it might have pain in its joints, in its hip, uh, you might want to put some non-slip mats around the floor so that it will have better grip um, and be more confident walking around. If it's having trouble climbing the stairs, for example, you might want to use a, a cloth sling to help it, help it along. Um, yeah, so, so that's what we have for, for dogs that are, are senior. Um, I must say that dogs are, that are senior are also more, more, could be more predictable in its temperament. So you might already know what its likes and dislikes are, its behaviour. It, because it's lower in energy, it might not need so much um, time and, and might not need so much uh, attention, rather not time, attention from you as compared to, for example, a puppy. So uh, it might be more suitable depending on your lifestyle choices. Okay, um, let's see what other questions we have. Okay, we have one from Alan. Hi, Alan. So how to engage with Project Adore? Just visit the website. So yes, we have six uh, Project Adore Animal Welfare Group partners. So you can um, uh, check out their website. So we have, we have uh, Causes for Animals, whom Margie was adopted through. We have Action for Singapore Dogs, uh, Singapore SOSD, Singapore, uh, SPCA, as well as uh, Mercy Light Animal Rescue and um, Sanctuary. And one more, exclusively mongrels. So yes, check out their websites. They do have uh, dogs uh, on their websites which are available for adoption. And you can also see if they are suitable for H HDB. Um, okay. So we have a question from Malcolm, Malcolm Ong. Uh, does Sing do Singapore specials bite? So, yes, of course, of course they do bite. They are, they are dogs, so all, all dogs can have the potential to bite. Um, cats as well, even your hamster and your little guinea pig can bite. So, um, yeah, it, it's important to understand this because um, understanding animal behaviour is, is, is important to understand how they would respond. Um, they do bite, but it also depends on on the triggers, on the context. So um, sometimes there might be a, a, a something that provokes them or startles them, and then they respond uh, accordingly. Sometimes there might be um, unfamiliar people or, or other animals that approach and enter their territory, which they naturally uh, do guard, just, just as all of us have our personal space. So. Um, Approaching them with care, with caution, uh, always letting the dog approach you rather than the other way around is, is advisable. 
and um, never try to, to uh, chase them or, or corner them or hit them. Um, yeah, or always proceed with caution as with any pet dog that you might, you might meet. They might look um, cute and fluffy, but um, not all of them might be used to having someone approach them suddenly or, or uh, pat them on the head suddenly without any warning. So always let the dog approach you, sniff your hand, and if they are comfortable, if you can see that their tails are wagging, and then you know that the, the dog might be comfortable with you. And of course, always check, check in with the owner as well, who has the dog on the leash, and um, to ask for permission first or ask how the dog is with, with uh, strangers. Okay, uh, we have a question from Hafiza. I saw a community dog running around recently and it had a tattoo in its ear. So what does that mean? So that's a really good question. So not all community dogs might be ear-tipped. They would be ear-tipped under the TNRM program, uh, but some of them might also have uh, an ear tattoo and it's a really a, a little black marking, like a little tattoo. Some of them might be in this sort of sick um, shape on the right ear and and that will show that that will mean to indicate that it's sterilized. So um, some some uh, pet owners or some vets, when they sterilize the dog, they might just put a tattoo and rather than tip the ear, so that it might be uh, more adoptable or more appealing to to pet owners. So community dogs usually have their ears tipped. Um, if if it just has a tattoo, it might have been a previously owned and and got lost or, or abandoned, unfortunately, and might still be in a community. So we can always, uh, a, a more accurate verification of the dog's identity would be to scan its microchip. So if you do see a, a, a dog that has signs of ownership, so for example, it might be um, have a collar or harness on, or it might look like um, well, a well-groomed pet dog, you can always, if it's friendly, you can always bring it in, see if you can leash it, bring it into your nearest vet clinic and they will happily scan the microchip for you and with the microchip number you can uh, call AVS on our animal um, feedback hotline and we can check and see if it has a licensed dog owner and then we can help to reunite the dog with its owner. So for dog owners out there, uh, another reminder to please always um, microchip your pet animals and uh, license it as well and this is how we can help to reunite your, your pet dog. It's also for traceability purposes, so we know uh, where, where all the dogs are, are residing in. So we have some more questions from Eileen. Okay. Eileen, Eileen asks, I'm thinking of adopting a Singapore Special. Will he or she get along with my existing dog? That's a really good question. I think it's always important to think about um, not just your human family members, but also your furry friend uh, family members. So whether or not it's along with the existing dog, um, I won't be able to tell you right now, but what you can do is to get them to meet each other. So just as you would meet uh, your, your, the special that you might be looking at adopting in a meet and greet session with the animal welfare groups or at the shelter or even with the existing pet owner, you, know, you would also at some point, once you get familiar and you're quite keen on that particular dog, you might want to get them to meet uh, your current dog. So you can do this, it's best to do this on a, in a neutral area. So you can always bring uh, them to a park, for example, and get them to meet each other to see how they behave, how they interact. It's always good to know as well the temperament of um, your own dog. So has he, has he or she been um, interacting with other dogs? Have you had other dogs before? Um, how does he or she interact when you bring, them, bring her uh, to meet uh, your friend's dogs, for example? and also getting to know the temperament of the dog that you are looking to adopt. So is that dog familiar with, with other dogs? Um, are they accepting? Do they tend to um, guard their food, for example? Do they have food aggression? Uh, you might want to give them their own spaces in, at home, um, their own resting spaces, their dogs, dog beds, um, their own feeding, feed and water bowls as well. Um, you might want to feed them um, at the same time in different areas of the house, you know. Uh, so always respecting each and every um, animal's preferences um, as well as temperament. That's, that's key and that's important. Okay. 
so mm, I think okay uh, Wayne has another question uh, Margie is so shy I wonder how you overcome adopted Singapore specials that are timid okay I think this question is really for Ben <laughs> Ben or Margie okay so um, Singapore specials that are timid you really need lots of time and patience uh, building bond a bond with the animal building trust uh, it might take several sessions before the dog even comes to approach you if you meet it if you first meet it in a shelter it might take some time before it trusts you to come out of its you know its safe space to approach you um, you can always talk to the animal shelter, um, the caregivers, the handlers, or in this case, for Margie's case, it was Marcus who was her trainer. So it's really important to understand uh, their likes and dislikes, what motivates them. So for example, Margie, whom we met earlier, Margie is uh, quite food orientated, food motivated, and quite a lot of specials are, quite a lot of dogs are. And this is always helpful because it's easy to get them to um, to recognize when they are doing something that you want them to do. So for example, if you want them to um, learn a certain command, you might um, wait till they do that particular action. So for example, if you're trying to get them to, to sit. So when you see that she has, has sit set, um, offer her a treat. And uh, perhaps if you have a dog clip, clicker, if not, you can just click your tongue like and uh, let her know that that's a, uh, an action that you want that you want from her and reward her for it so uh, if she does it again just reinforce the behavior um, using a positive method using the treat um, to to recognize that behavior and let her know yes that's what you want so every time you do that uh, with the repetition she'll recognize that yes uh, you want me to sit and after she learns that behavior you can then put a verbal cue to the to the action so then you say sit and then she starts to associate the word sit with the treat and with the action and next time you can drop the treat and when you say sit she will just sit and she'll know that it's a positive uh, action that you wanted from her um, with with treats uh, there's also like a, a food a, a pyramid of treats uh, different levels of treats have different um, uh, appeal to the dog so you might start with some low level treats and progressively as you want to get the behavior um, a more complicated behavior from the dog you might use a higher level treat such as a chicken liver chicken breast um, sometimes people use peanut butter so uh, these are all different techniques that we use at our shelter and uh, it, it helps to to train the dog and and get them more confident and more um, um, well adapted yes all right so uh, I think that's all we have for today that was the last question so thank you very much for joining us today at our AVS webinar uh, we hope you learn lots about the TNRM program um, I got to know a little bit about Project Adore and how you can adopt a dog uh, into your HDB flat and also got to know the different animal welfare groups that we work with uh, so that you can always get in touch with them if you would like to adopt a dog so um, thank you very much again for being here this Saturday uh, morning and see you at our next webinar. Have a good day. Goodbye.